Hey guys, welcome back to this tutorial series where we're going to be learning a little bit about four loops. And I know you're excited right there, you're probably waiting for me to jump in, and yeah, I am. But uh, first off, to start off, the if-else statement that we've done in the previous tutorial was kind of like a single expression evaluation, and if it was deemed true, it would go one way, false the other way. Well, the for loop, what it's going to allow us to do is run something multiple times. So we don't have to make a decision right there, but maybe later. And so it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense now, so let's just jump into it. We're going to declare a variable a, and you'll see what that uh, has anything to do with our program now. And the for loop is just simply for with parentheses. Now these inside these parentheses, there's going to be three parameters. The first one is going to be setting the initial value. And you'll understand what I mean here once we go on to the second parameter. The next parameter that we're going to put inside these parentheses is going to be the condition in which this loop is going to continue. So in this case, we're going to evaluate A. A right now is set to 0, but let's say we want to evaluate A until maybe it gets to 7. So we're going to put uh, A is, we're going to run this loop as well as long as A is less than or equal to, in this case, 7, as we talked about there. And what we want to do with A is we want to increase its value every time it goes through the loop by 1. And the reason for that is because this loop will run infinitively if we don't increase A. And since we want to get out of this loop, we got to increase A. So there's two ways to write. We could write A equals A plus, plus 1 and leave it at that, or we could use a shortcut here and just put a plus plus, and that simply adds a plus one every time, and it assigns it to itself, all right? So there's a little bit of a shortcut for you, but you can also do it the other way as well. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna print this to the screen. And so we'll just simply put uh, percent %i because we're gonna show that. We'll have a line break in there, and we'll display a. Don't forget your semicolon there. And now what I want you to do is run this so we can talk through what just happened. So now you see your output should be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so this for loop has allowed us to print out seven different, wait, well, there's actually eight if you count zero there, eight different values on the screen through just this one simple statement. So let's go through this. It starts out at 0, a is at equal to 0. A then goes to this point here where it goes 0 is less than or equal to 7. That's true. So the loop's like, hey, yeah, you can proceed forward and you can print this to the screen. So it goes ahead and it prints 0, and it's like, yeah, come back and play, though, since you're still, you're still true. So then it goes to this last expression here where it increases the value. It says 0 plus 1 equals 1. And it loops back over to this right here, the exper the, ex the uh, condition. At this point, it goes 1 is still less than or equal to 7. Yeah, go ahead, print it out on the screen, buddy. You can hang out with us. So he's going, OK, that's awesome. Goes over to this other exclusion. It goes all the way up. And let's say we get to 7, which 7 is less than or equal to 7. Prints on the screen, as we see down here goes over to this last thing and it goes 8. All right, so now we're equivalent to 8. 8 is less than or equal to 7. That's false. And he says, hey, buddy, you are now not a part of this loop. You cannot print out 8 on the screen. You've got to go on to the next statement, which there's none in this case. And the loop continues, or the loop ends there. So as you can see, this has extreme power to run through like some crazy mathematical things that uh, would have taken us a long time. Now in the upcoming tutorials, you're going to see how crucial it is to understand some of these key functions. So make sure you understand how the for loop works, how the if else statement works, and we will continue to use those. So we will catch you guys in the next tutorial.